Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Mike, and I'm back to talk about tech god, Mark Andreessen. Do you know Mark Andreessen? This is a man who probably 20 years ago, I don't know how long it was, maybe it was more, I don't know, but many years ago, Mark Andreessen sold a web browser for $4.2 billion to AOL. I mean, is that not the deal of a century? <laughs> no, no, I'm simplifying things. Mark Andreessen uh, invented or created Mosaic, which evolved into Netscape. Anybody remember using Netscape way back in the day? I remember it. But Mark sold that to AOL, and I want to say he sold it for like $4.2 billion. I, I, I just can't get my mind around the fact that he sold a company that was essentially a, a, a web browser. I mean, think about that. It, it's, such a, it, it's such a boring utility, something you never pay for, just given away for free. But this was back in the day. You know, This was the new economy, man. The internet was the new economy. All the old stuff doesn't apply anymore. Just forget how you think that economies and uh, work and money is made and human beings are going to live. It's all changing, baby. Uh, those were the glory days. I love the early internet. I miss that. Anyway, so Mark Andreessen wrote an article recently called It's Time to Build. Now, if you don't know Mark, as I mentioned, he got rich selling uh, Netscape. Since then, Mark is really well known for being um, an investor. He's got his firm, Andreessen Horowitz, and uh, they invest in tech and startups, et cetera, a big fund, really well regarded. And he's, and he's understood as a guy that can see the future. He's famous. He wrote an article called Software is Eating the World. That Maybe that was like 20 years ago. I mean, maybe I'm really dating myself. I can't remember when the AOL uh, Netscape deal happened. But anyway, the fact of the matter is Andreessen's highly respected. He's one of the, he's one of the patriarchs. Oh, patriarchy. Uh, he's one of the patriarchs of the tech world. I'm sure there are some matriarchs there too. Let's not get wound up about this stuff, people. Lighten up. So here's the thing. Uh, he wrote this article recently called It's Time to Build. I want to say it came out like a week or two ago. And essentially, Andreessen is using the current crisis, the current pandemic as a lens to focus in on a problem that he thinks is deeply rooted in our society and he's upset about it. And essentially that is like, why aren't we doing better? Why? Like, like the crisis is showing we're ill-equipped. We can't even get equipment to people that need it. What's wrong with our manufacturing capabilities? What's wrong with our technology? We can't test anything. And, and, and why can't, why are, why are people wearing like, like rain ponchos as protective gear in the ER? Like he's just, He's looking at the world going, this doesn't make sense to me. We should be way better off than we are. Why are we not better off? And I think it's a great question. I, I totally agree with his question. Now, his whole argument is we need to start building again. Building is what made our society great. Building is what created the West. The West were builders. That's what our ancestors did. They built things. And if we could start building, we could start asking the questions like, why not? And just start building things. He even, he even uh, gives a little nod to his pal, Elon Musk. Elon, a builder, wants to take us to the moon and beyond. Uh, of course, my friend Elon created the Cybertruck. But the thing that Andreessen says is that we need to start building. And that's the problem in our society. We don't build anymore. And he, you know, I'm inferring this from the article, but he jumps right in. And I think that Andreessen is kind of laying the blame uh, at the feet of the political divide in our country. He's saying that, now he takes both parties to task. He gives both go, both credit, both sides. He says, look, the right, you get a lot of things right, but you're, you've got some problems that are holding us back from building. And the left, you get some things right too. You, you, you ask some great questions. You got a good heart, kid. You got heart. But you're also holding us back in specific ways from building. And so Andreessen's thought is if we can get past this political BS, and start building again, that we can overcome these problems. We can overcome these problems. You know, I couldn't help but when I read it, and I will link to this article uh, in the description below. You should read it for yourself. I could not help but read it. And just it, in the back of my mind, it was kind of like, uh, make America build again. You know, like, like if, if Andreessen were to make a baseball hat, it would say, make America build again. Now, he doesn't come out and say that. I, I don't even know if he references uh, President Trump. And quite frankly, I would be surprised if Andreessen's a big Trump fan, but, but I just couldn't help but pick up that thread from Andreessen's uh, piece here, It's Time to Build. And I want to be careful. I'm not setting myself up like I know more than Mark Andreessen. I get it. I've never built a web browser, and, and if I had built one, I doubt it'd be able to sell for $4.2 billion, okay? So I respect everything that Mark has accomplished. I respect his mind, 
And I respect the fact that he's trying to tackle some tough questions. So here's the thing. I want to get at what I think is flawed in Mark's argument. And, and again, I would encourage you to read it. Long and short of it, Mark's focused on the fact that if we would just start building, things would be better. And there's some issues you can get into things like, is that utopian and who gets to build what? And why do, why do you think a gleaming city is better necessarily than a historic older city? I mean, okay, who cares about all that? For me, the root issue, the thing behind all of this is the question, not so much we're not builders anymore. You have to ask the question, why don't we build? And, and Andreessen never really addresses that. He's saying we're not building because of, because of arguing the political divide. I don't agree with that. I think there's a deeper problem. And the deeper problem is we have transformed Western society from a society of producers to a society of consumers. We have become a society of consumers. You just you cannot argue against that, that statement. And I think that is at the root of what's wrong here. It's not that we're not building. Yes, there are individuals that love to build. There are people that like to do things. But on a whole, on a whole, we have become a society of consumers. We, we live to consume. We're told that we should be consuming. We're told that no one should criticize us for our consumption habits. You should be able to eat whatever you want. You should be able to sleep with whoever you want, whenever you want. You should be able to do what you want. You should be able to watch whatever you want, listen to whatever you want, whenever you want it. No friction, nothing in the way, no guilt, nothing. No responsibility. And, you know, I'm not going to come down all the way on the other side saying you shouldn't consume. Look, human beings were created to consume and not just, it's not, I don't mean just like, look at me, you know, I like to eat. I'm not just eating to live. I don't get up every morning and go, I just need a, a very functional meal to get the proper nutrients so that I'm fueled to do my work today. No, man, I like to eat some good food. My wife knows how to cook. I know how to cook. We like to, you know, dig in, have a nice bottle of wine throw a steak on the grill. Come on, that's life. So part of consumption is important. You have to enjoy life. It's part of being human. But I think we've got the, the formula flipped around. We live to consume. We don't consume to produce. We don't consume to, to produce. And that's the problem. You see, I think that human beings are designed to be producers. We're designed to work. This is one of the problems with this pandemic right now that people refuse to hear. They just don't want to understand it. People need to work. It's not just about we need to make money. We need money because, you know, we're losing money with this pandemic and people, oh, you just all you care about is money. No, human beings need work. We need it because otherwise we begin to get despaired. We get depressed. We get saddened. We lose our way. We become unfocused and our self-image and our image of the world and how we see things, the lenses that we look through and the way that we process and understand the world around us becomes darker. And the darker that becomes, the more hope that we lose. And the more hope that we lose, uh, the more we struggle to, to thrive and to find fulfillment as human beings. We need to produce. And, and I think this, for me, is what I wish Andreessen would have got at. I, I, and now it's kind of inferred. I mean, he can say, it. oh, I just assumed everybody knew. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going through Mark's mind. But for me, it's not about building. I'm not worried that you're not building and she's not building and I'm not building and he's not building. I'm more concerned about the fact that we're not productive. Now, I, I understand we get up, we go to work, we do the work that we have to do, but I really feel culturally and, and you know, even economically, we kind of live to enjoy ourselves. We're just always seeking pleasure of some sort. And we're encouraged. That's what you should do. I, I, I think about the amount of time that I spend watching Netflix or, or watching uh, YouTube videos. You guys are watching YouTube video right now. God bless you all. Um, I think about the time that goes into that. Like, I don't read books like I used to. I don't write like I used to. I could be building my business more. There are projects I could be doing around my house. Like, you know, there are things that I could be doing. And I think this, this thing may seem subtle on one level, but I think it's insidious. I think it's a dangerous thing that's happened. We, we have based our economy and our society on consumption. And I like to consume. And I, and I think that, you know, there's some wonderful, wonderful pleasures in life that I, that I would wish that everyone can enjoy. The, the intimacy of love and a relationship, uh, a, a fine meal with wonderful friends, you know, just consuming, uh, taking in a beautiful sunset. I mean, uh, as you overlook a lake. I mean, there are just so many lovely, wonderful things. Even a great Netflix series. There's just some fun. There's some good things. 
But I think that we've got it backwards. I think that we are so focused on consumption and we have ignored, almost like laughed or turned our noses up at production. And folks, I think that's the secret. I think if we can shift our society back to being a producer society, I'm not saying get rid of consumerism, but you know, even if you listen to the news, consumer confidence is down. Markets are saying consumer confidence is up. You know, it's like Christmas. Uh, how how was the consumer uh, behavior around the Christmas holidays? You know, this, everything is geared. We're told that we are consumers. That's what they label us. Consumer confidence. 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 So when you've got a society of consumers, who's producing? And if it's all about consumption, then of course you don't have the necessary infrastructure, materials, and so on when there's a crisis. Because if it's all about consumption, then it's all about how do we get consumption at the cheapest price? How do we get consumption the most efficiently and the most inexpensively? Well, then you start offshoring all your infrastructure because some poor slob in another country is going to do it for a third of the price as you or your neighbor. And they're going to work harder because they're not in the consumer mindset, not yet. And so you get it for, 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 for cheap and you love it, right? You and I love it. So, so I, I would encourage you, take a look at Mark's article and just as you're reading it, think about this point that I'm, that I'm trying to make here. I don't know if I'm making it very well. And, and, you know, and, and ask yourself, like you look at yourself, take an inventory, take audit, like, am I more of a producer or am I more of a consumer? What motivates me? And, and I have to ask these questions of myself. I'm not here wagging a finger at everybody you know, what motivates me? And I think it's hard because I think, you know, a lot of the companies that Mark Andreessen has backed are designed to put us in a consumption mode. A lot of the social media and the different digital tools and technologies out there that you and I have been enjoying these last few years, Mark and his ilk, and I don't mean that in a nasty way, but Mark and the technologists of the world are behind that stuff. And they're putting in hooks and manipulations and, and very deep psychological triggers to get you and I to just stay on a platform for hour after hour after hour. So we realize we're drooling. Holy smokes, what happened to my day? What happened to my life? Guys, I want you to have the best life possible. And I think part of that is becoming a producer. And we're going to spend some time on this channel talking more about that. If you've gotten this far into the video, well, good for you. I, I, I want to talk more about how do we become producers? How do we overcome this culture, the society that we find ourselves in, in the West. And even if you're in Asia, even if you're in uh, Europe, the Middle East, wherever you are, how do we overcome these cultures of consumption to become producers, to realize our best self, to put out into the world our ingenuity, our will, and, and our hard work in ways that are meaningful. I think if you see people doing that, if you have more and more people doing that, I think you have the kind of world that Mark Andreessen wishes was out there. I don't think it's necessarily about building, although I think building is an outcome. It is a result, it is a fruit of a tree that's rooted deeply in production. Guys, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the ride. And I hope you're doing well. Guys, I hope this has been useful to you. Please know that I love you all, and I'll catch you in the next video.